Hey, we got the tractor warming up. We're going to do a flow test on the 1025R today. We're going to test the power beyond, the rear SCVs, the front SCVs, even the third function kit to see what hydraulic flow we get. We're going to try different RPM. Um, what else are we going to try, Ken? I don't know, but we're going to try everything. <laughs> so hopefully at the end of this, we'll know how a 1025R works. Let's get started. As I said, we're getting the temperature up right now. The uh, oil temperature, it says about 110. Ken, tell us what we got here. Okay, we have a very sophisticated hydraulic flow valve. The way this works is flow actually, the oil actually travels from the power beyond loop through this gauge and back to the tractor. So okay, so we've extended our circle, we've extended yep. our loop, yep. and added this in between. Okay, yep. I this got is it. Nothing different, this is just like a backhoe being in here. Okay. So we've got three different gauges on here. We've got a temperature gauge, we want to check the oil at normal operating temperature. Okay. We've got a flow gauge that reads in gallons per minute or liters per minute. Okay. And then we have a pressure gauge and also an incorporated loading valve. And the loading valve will apply restriction to the system so we can choke down the flow, build up the pressure, because we do work at pressure. Right? Yeah. Pressure does our work, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't really help us to know what our flow is at zero pressure because we don't work at zero pressure. Right. So we can load up the system very simply. You can listen to the tractor, guys. Yeah. You can actually maybe hear the restriction through the valve. He's applying just less than the relief right. valve pressure at this point. Right. Just less than 2,000 PSI. Right. And it's really taxing the tractor. It is. It is. And our flow has dropped because of that. Now also, we're only at just above idle, about 1,900 RPM. So we normally work the tractor a little higher than that. I think most of us do anyway. So we'll go ahead and bump up the bump about a PTO RPM. Okay. And see what we can do there. All right. We're right at 3,200 PTO RPM. Okay. I see we're up to about 120 degrees, 115 degrees. Yep, it's definitely getting hot. Yep. It's gonna get uncomfortable to hold. So, we got our system loaded oh, down. Pumping that up. Okay, we're at full throttle and we see just under three gallon per minute. Right. Zero restriction. We're not restricting it at all, so this is less than what the spec says it should run. Yes, it is. So if we try to do some work, haven't really affected our flow much yet. We knocked about one gallon a minute off of our flow. Not even that much, I don't think. No? Okay. So it can do as much at full pressure as it can yeah. with no pressure. Now at idle, we're running right around one gallon a minute. So a lot of people try to try to work with these things at idle. They try to run their, their loader. Yeah, they think they're saving fuel. I'm not sure why, maybe it's the noise. But yeah, they, they try to run around at idle, which is what, around 1,500 RPM on these? And I've said over and, over and over again that I just don't think that's an effective way to run this little track. It is not. You're doing more damage, than, more harm than good in the long run because you're gonna lug the engine more um, than if you just run it at at least 2,000, 2,500 RPM. Especially when you try to do some work. You can see at 1,000 pounds, 1,800 pounds, we're really choking our flow down. We've got hardly any flow to work with at all. Our loader's gonna operate so slow, it's, yep. it's just not efficient, it's just not an efficient way to work. So we had actually tried to, uh, we had tried to source a digital flow gauge for this, just for accuracy. Yeah. So we could see decimals, you know? 
um, but they were just unavailable when we purchased this. Supply issues, I guess, so like supply everything Supply issues, manufacturer issues, they, they, they were just unavailable. So this is the best we could get um, for, you know, this is a decent amount of money. And it's got a zero to 16 gallon emitted uh, specs on it. So we've got reasonable good accuracy yeah. for our machines. We I think our only challenge is being able to read it precisely. Yes. I'm sure the gauge is really accurate. Yes. We just don't get that precision yeah. readout. Yeah. We're at the lower end of the scale with a one series machine, but a two series and, and like and like the three series, um, you know, we'll be more in the middle of the scale. The gauge will be that much more accurate, um, easier to read. You have a better resolution, but but it is interesting that we can't get three and a half gallons a minute, which is what this tractor spec at. Temperature's up to 145, I believe, uh, on the oil at this point. Yeah. And again, that's not a problem. It's not uncommon for the hydraulic fluid to be 160, 180 degrees, 100 degrees over ambient temperature. I think it's 70 degrees out and humid today, so not uncommon when we're doing work, especially if you have one of the, uh, you know, a, different, a different machine that has got well, even on this machine. So this valve will get hot. You run your tractor for a while. Understand for this particular test, this valve is not plugged in. Okay. Right, it's, uh, it's unplugged right here. Right. Um, we'll plug that in a little bit later and see if it affects our overall flow. Right. I you're can't just, see that it will, no. given that we're only at three gallons per minute when, when we're full Correct. throttle. Correct. We do have more fittings though. We do have, you know, every one of those fittings creates a restriction. So it's be interesting to see. Now we've added the Summit rear SCV kit back into the line. So it's in our Power Beyond right. there, right? We have our pressure line from the tractor, den denoted by the P on the tractor, going into the third function valve, out of the valve, into the flow gauge, out of the flow gauge, and returning our return to the tank, or return to the tractor. Okay. So everything's in series. We have our, we have maintained our flow. So I'm operating one of the solenoid valves, which is effectively stopping the flow since we have nothing plugged in. And you hear the tractor going into relief. I'm activating the third function valve. And since there's nothing hooked to it, it's going to restrict all the flow, exactly. force it into relief. Right. It's stopping the flow. So it's going to zero. You can hear the tractor lugging down. And we see the flow going to zero. Yes. Okay, I'm not seeing any reduction in flow right. through the summit valve. And that's good, that's what we wanna see. Okay, three gallons per minute, pretty much right on. Doesn't matter whether this is in the loop or not. Yes. We're at 140 degrees. Hey, I wonder how it's gonna do on the front of the tractor. We've got three things to test up there, right? We got the third function, we also have right. the regular yes. two loader SCVs. Yeah, and we're going through Smaller couplers. We're going through quarter-inch ISO couplers now, rather than half-inch couplers. So okay, let's check it out. Okay, we're on the front of the tractor now. We're going to test the flow at the main loader ports here. We saw just over three gallons per minute through the power beyond. Yes. A little less in the spec. We're going to go from here. We're at idle. We're seeing about one GPM. Looks like three gallons per minute, Ken. Just a little bit more information on that test. I was using a bungee here to hold this in the upward position because we were on the lift function. Now, it would have been needed to held in the down position if had, had we had the hoses reversed. So that's a little how that works. Now, we're gonna test the third function next on the Little Deer tractor. It is the very first item in that hydraulic loop. If you missed the hydraulics 101 or hyd uh, beginning hydraulics video that we did, um, go check that out. First item in the loop, I can't see how it'll be any different than what we saw before. It should but not be, for sure. Who knows? Ken, that about does it. That's all we can test with what we have. Three yep. gallons per minute at the third function, three gallons per minute at the loader port, three gallons per minute at the power beyond. Correct. Three gallons per minute. At the, rem at at the, the uh, rear remotes. At the rear remotes, yeah. We may have not shown that on camera. I think we did. Did we? I believe we did. We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> not that surprising. A little bit lower, perhaps, than what we expected. Three yeah. and a half is the spec. Yeah. Um, 
you know, we're at the we're at the lower end of our our abilities of the machine. The machine's rated. I, I believe the tester's rated for two or one one gallon a minute to sixteen to sixteen. So, you know, it's going to be most accurate at fifty percent scale, which would be around eight gallons yeah. a minute. So we're on the lower end, so our accuracy may be off just a hair. And the other aspect we repeated earlier is it's hard for us to see uh, the, the detail. The, yeah, the, the gauge may be really accurate, right. but our resolution of, of determining even down below, say, two-tenths of a gallon is, yeah. is hard to see. Hope you guys enjoyed this. We try to show everything we can about the One Series and all the other little tractors that uh, are popular in the, the world today. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time with Tim. Tim. I, this is my, I this like is it. my thing. I always do this. <laughs>